Welcome back for another video. I'm Abad, a free-to-play and game player in Raid Shadow Legends. Today, the portal is shining gold. Glowing. The glowy portal that we all look forward to. That said, it's it's only a 10x, uh, so we're not really going to have too high our expectations. But we're in the middle of the bivalve fusion, or fragment collector rather, and I mentioned in the guide that I was going to skip the champion chase and focus on the summon rush. My expectation being that we'd probably need around seven or eight sacreds to get the champion fragments. It is 3,500 points, so seven sacreds will be enough to secure us all the fragments we need from this event. I had hoped the distribution of rewards in the third tier of the summon rush would be. Should we just say four legendary books rather than three? I'm a bit disappointed. I don't really care about the XP barrel. I think it's a waste of time, to be honest. So it's a bit of a shame that the champion fragments at 3,500 replace the legendary tome you'd normally get there. I was kind of hoping the fragments might come at 3,000 instead, but it is what it is. So I think I will probably summon the full 15 sacreds to get these three tomes and um, and two chickens down here. But we'll definitely 100% have to do the seven to get the fragments. And, you know, depending on what our, our RNG has been up to then, we'll, we'll make a, a judgment call. In the meantime, clan boss has reset. So maybe we've got an extra legend, uh, an extra sacred shard there. So let's just quickly click through these chests. Don't expect much from hard or brutal. Just a few gems, not bad. Any, any gems are nice. Now nightmare, an epic tome, nothing much. Uh, ancient shard. So it's really down to the ultra nightmare, ancient shard. And will we get a sacred? And we do. Beautiful. Always nice to see it. So we have forty six saved up. Like I said, we'll definitely pull seven. We may, in fact, pull the 15. Let's see how we get on. And first up, we have Broodlord. I personally think he's an underrated epic. Uh, I think these are a bit harsh. I haven't finished building mine out. Um, but, you know, I think with this ability here, you could... Um, you effectively could use Broodlord to get the Mischief Head to, to focus a specific ally by, by giving them additional buffs. Uh, otherwise, where I think he actually has more use is in wave clearing or in faction wars, you have this AoE stun with a decent chance against, uh, against for an epic, you know, AoE stun at 50%, similar to Husk. So, and the Provoke on an A1. So, you know, it's not bad. It's, it's really not that bad. And second, we have Oathbound. An epic, I think, is actually very strong as a CC champion with freeze on the A1 and two A kind of pseudo AoEs. You've got the AoE with decreased attack that does a, a TM de depletion or reduction, rather. And this uh, four attack at random that uh, if the enemy has decreased attack, it guarantees a block active skill cooldown. So when paired with someone who can do AOE decrease attack, such as Stagnite in Faction Wars, he's uh, extremely strong. Third up, another epic. Tarshon. I haven't bothered building Tarshon, but uh, his, the only real reason to have him at all is this increased defense and increased TM on the A3, which can set up some defense-based nukers. But, you know, his TM feels fractionally worse than um, the Void rare uh, Doom Screech. So he, he's a little bit overshadowed by a rare, which is a bit of a shame. I think if they improved it slightly, he would have more use. Fourth, another epic. Magna, fantastic champion. It is a dupe for me, but like a really top tier Magna, one of the hardest hitting HP champions in the game. And uh, an epic 
as well. So, great champion. Fifth up, another epic. Ursine Ironhide. A throwback to the original Battle Pass. I think it was introduced during the Battle Pass, if I remember correctly, although I joined the game towards the end of, of the Battle Pass, the one and only. And to be honest, just a very underwhelming overall. Like, this ability is decent. Um, it's probably his best thing, but it really needs to be on a three-turn or four-turn cooldown to, to be kind of viable anywhere other than Faction Wars. And then the TM reduction is just too little. Next up, another epic. So we're really not having much luck here. Hordin, I'm not a big fan of him. He can hit hard, but it's all single target stuff. And here's our seventh sacred, another epic with Excruciator. So we've not had really much luck at all. I think I will pull the remaining eight required to max out the event. I thought, you know, if we'd pull Trunder or something already, then I wouldn't bother. But uh, we'll carry on going. Fenax, good champion. You know, I, I do think he is strong and the, the ratings are largely justified. The A1 hits extremely hard and got good utility on the A2 and A3. I think he can carry Faction Wars for you for so good order. As I mentioned in, in the video I just put up, another epic. It's, it's really... Epic Fest at the moment, Infernal Baroness. I have actually noticed that people have um, used her in one of the secret rooms for fast clears. Um, and I've not really looked into it too much, but uh, I think it's because you've got the AoE A1 and um, AoE A2. And I noticed people had used her in the Epic Defense only secret room on uh, Doom Tower 2 cycle for speedruns so maybe a sleeper champion there and we got a legendary yes it is Trunder that was the one I was hoping for it's the only 10x that I didn't have oh that's that's a lot of luck we all know that Trunder is a absolute beast and for me that that was really the champion I was hoping to pull here it was one of the main reasons for me to continue pulling shards uh was really in hope of getting the trunder when i was saying you know will i pull only seven to get the fragments my thinking would been if i'd pulled a legendary and it was trunder by then i'd definitely be stopping but uh i hadn't so i thought we'd uh would carry on i mean there's just what is there to say about her just phenomenal and that actually means i have every dwarf legendary as well she was the only one I was missing. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to build her out. Bring on CVC. Raid Wait Shadow Legends. Next up, Siege Hulk. You know, a decent faction war champion, to be honest. Uh, you know, it's got this... A3 is not really that exciting, uh, but um, decrease speed can be pretty useful. When you, uh, particularly against the the bosses, and this one is the the main reason for his existence. He can hit pretty hard, and a we drop defense on a three turn cooldown. So if you don't have Ugo, he's a a strong champion. We have now pulled, I believe, eleven shards. So let's pull another. Our twelfth shard, another epic, Frostbringer. I think could be decent. I don't agree the ratings are that high, but the A3 is actually a strong ability. Um, and I think, you know, if you pair her with, say, Inquisitor Shamil uh, in Faction Wars, she'd be pretty strong, particularly if you don't have Deacon or Mordecai. So bringing the increased attack and two buffs for Shamil to ignore defense on and bringing a kind of the best Epic replacement for an AoE drop defense if you don't have anyone else to do it. Not bad overall. So the 13th shard. And we got both bears. Unfortunately, Ursine Ice Crusher is absolute trash. They, he has the AoE drop crit rate, which is a very underwhelming debuff uh, in the game. 
and then a very low chance of block active skills on the A1, not good enough to, to be of use. And then the rest of everything's kind of pretty weak, pretty weak source. And what are we going to pull next? My game seems to have died. Another epic, another magna. We have now pulled 14 shards. Let's just confirm because the last thing you want to do is waste a shard. And yeah, one more to go. Back there, sacred. Can we get a second legendary? We don't deserve it, but we're greedy. <laughs> And Giscard, also a good champion. You know, I think a very strong epic. If you got Giscard early game, he'd be be very strong. You know, we've got the AoE Provoke here, which gives him a little shield. It's a nice way of kind of getting a bit of sustain. You can increase defense and increase attack on all allies, which is actually really good, particularly early game where you're struggling on survivability and you might have a combination of defense and attack-based uh, damage dealers. This way you're increasing everyone's survivability and everyone's damage simultaneously. Really good as a as an early game kind of carry champion. I I think I think very strong in that regards and decrease attack on the A1 with a with a, like a good chance, you know, when book. This is a really high chance decrease attack. It's a shame it's only one turn, but if if he's quick enough, you know, uh if he's quick enough, it will you'll cycle it. Quite a lot and, and against bosses early game this this can be the difference so there we have it let's go and collect our rewards save the energy for something i'm not sure what but uh, we'll figure it out later and look at all these chickens and legendary books that is fantastic you can see now free to play i've broken the hundred legendary book <laughs> Session. I wanted to uh, reach a hundred books just just for the uh, just for the shits and giggles, really. <laughs> like no no real need to no no real reason to do so, but uh, but I did. But I can tell you who I'll be booking next. Who will be instantly built? This thunder thighs her herself, Mrs. Trunda. Can't wait. I really can't wait to, to build her out. Like, very exciting. Oh, I lie. I don't actually have them all. <laughs> I mean, this one's a Doom Tower champion, and Nari I've got ready as a Fragment champion to summon. So I kind of do other than Morley. So yeah, and I was really wrong. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it doesn't really matter too much. The important thing is I have Tronda. And on that note, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.